Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to play Zombicide, the Black Plague version, uh, because I like this one the best. And also, I haven't really played uh, hardly any like rolling combat games on this channel that I could think of, um, and so I figured it's about time, and I love zombies. So, let's just do a quick overview of what is going on. Um, there is a scenario. We are playing the first scenario. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, scenario on the screen, which says that it is called Big Game Hunting. We quickly discovered the starting point of the zombie evasion. Other survivors spotted a huge zombie wandering the streets and some kind of sick wizard directing the horde to engulf us. It took us two days to pinpoint the necromancer's location and understand the abomination can't be killed by any weapon at our disposal. Let's raid the necromancer's laboratory and take them both out with a secret brew of our own, Dragonfire. Let the hunt begin. So if you look over here on the right hand side, it tells us that we have two objectives. Reach these objectives in any order to win the game. Slay the beast and its master. We need to kill at least one abomination and one necromancer. And then we need to raid the laboratory. Take all objectives. So let's quickly take a look at the board and talk about uh, what it, that means exactly. It says raid the laboratory, take all objectives. So here on the map, we are all going to be starting on this space. There are four different buildings. We got two small buildings and one medium sized building and a big building over here. And in each of these buildings, there is at least one of these X's and these X's are different objectives. And so one of these objectives has a blue X underneath it. If you watched my video, uh, as I set this up, I randomly put one of these X's has a blue X on the bottom of it. So with that in mind, let's go back uh, into the uh, rule book or to the quest book and read what it says about that. So under special rules, it tells us that we are looking for the laboratory. Each objective gives five experience points to the survivor who takes it. And then it says torch them. Finding the blue objective marks the laboratory's location. Immediately spawn a necromancer in the zone. If a necromancer is already on the board, spawn an abomination instead. If both of these are already on the board, nothing happens, but you still get the experience. So in this particular scenario of Zombicide, our goal is as a group of six survivors, we need to go through and we are trying to find uh, each of these objectives. We have to actually go into the room and uh, look at the objectives essentially. It'll be an action that we do. And so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven objectives on the board. That's where we're going after. And then it also tells us that we need to slay at least one necromancer and one abomination. So there are these two models here. This is a necromancer. Chances are this won't be too hard to kill and there will be plenty of them to kill. What will be tough to kill is this um, abomination. And we'll talk more about um, combat in a little bit, but essentially in order to kill the abomination in this base game of Zombicide, we are going to have to find um, some dragon bile. Let me reach up here for a second. So I'm going to have to find some dragon bile, which will be in one of these cards. We need to throw that on the ground, and then after that we're going to have to set it on fire when the uh, abomination is on top of it. That is going to be the only way to kill the abomination for the materials that I have for the base game. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to get into these buildings, kill off a whole bunch of zombies. Eventually we will see these guys come on the board. We need to kill them, and I definitely need to hit each one of those objectives. So these are the six characters that are going to be playing this scenario. We have Clovis in green, we have Silas in orange, and my favorite in blue. And then we have Baldric in uh, purple, Nelly in red, and Samson in yellow. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I am terrible at controlling multiple characters. But when it came time for choosing a combat game, since this is cooperative, I was like, well, this seems like the right pick. Plus, it's super popular. And no matter how many characters you're playing with, most of these scenarios are going to require six, sorry, I just bumped the camera, six survivors to be in play. There's a couple of them that say like four to six. But for the most part, no matter how many people are playing the game, you're going to need six survivors until you kind of divvy them out. There are some advantages to controlling multiple characters. Now, it is really tough to track everything, and kind of the counterbalance to that is I'm going to be able to choose which order these characters play in. Usually, if you're playing with several different people, so let's say that I'm playing with two other people, so three of us playing all together, so we're each controlling two characters. 
Well, where we're sitting determines turn order. So maybe I would go and have my two characters, let's say I have these two, and I could choose which of these to activate first and then to activate the other one. And then we would go around the table to the next player who would get to choose which of these two to activate first and then activate the other one. And then the third player would get to choose which of these two to activate first and then activate the other one. Where I'm playing solo, I'm going to be able to activate these characters in whatever order that I want to, which is helpful. But let me just also say that there is so much going on. All of these guys have a different special power. They're all going to have different items. I am going to make mistakes and I'm going to miss things that people have. I'm going to do my best to not make a rules mistake, but this is not a strategy guide. Uh, <laughs> I'll do my very best. This is not a strategy guide. This is a how to play Zombicide correctly, not how to play Zombicide well. So, now having said that, on the back of the rule book, because this is a very big rule book, there is a really great summary on how this game plays. The first step is you're going to choose a first player at the beginning of the game. They receive the first player token. I don't have that on the board because I will always be the first player, clearly. Then after that, what we're going to do is all of the players are going to have a phase. I'm the only player. So basically, I'm going to activate all six of these characters. They're all going to have a turn. And once that's all done, then we're going to enter a zombie phase. And after that, we'll do like an end phase, cleanup phase kind of a thing. We have some combat helping with this table down here. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But uh, here we are on the player phase. So what I need to do is I need to choose one of these characters to activate. And every character is going to have three actions that they're allowed to do on their turn. And of those actions, we're going to be able to do these. So first things first, let's go ahead and decide who is going to go first and kind of what our opening strategy is going to be. So as I'm looking at the board, um, to my knowledge, I could think of three probably main strategies. I only ever do one of them. When I, I have played this game a few times with different groups, and this is what we usually do. One strategy is take your group of six, send three of the people down to this building, three of the people up to this building, have them fighting the zombies, getting the objectives, all of that kind of stuff, which is fine. That's one option. After that, you decide what you're going to do. A second option is, I just thought of this, um, the earlier on in the game that you open doors, the less threatening the zombies will be as they fill up the space. In other words, if I open up a door to this building early on, it's going to be less crazy than if I open up the door to this building at the end. So usually what we do is because this building has so many rooms, it's so big, uh, my, my family or whoever I play with, we usually save this building for the end. But because we save it for the end, it gets flooded like crazy. And so that's a, a different strategy. One strategy is split up into two teams, go to these buildings. A different strategy is what if we just send it, ev send it, send everybody into this building over here and just populate that thing with zombies and get the big building first. A third strategy, because this is not the first time I recorded this, I was about to do this and then I got scared. A third strategy I'm thinking is, what if I send all six of my people down this way into this room? So just to one of the rooms. It doesn't matter which one. Maybe I'll go up to the top. Who cares? Send all six people into a small building to all search for some weapons. And then once we have the weapons, early on, come and get to this other one. And then we'll take care of the other buildings later. So that kind of is what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I'm going to pick one of these characters to lead off, and I'm going to send them up into this way to open one building. I'm going to keep all six people together. We're going to go into that building. We'll clear out the zombies and we're going to search for some items or some weapons that will help us. So I really could pick any one of the six characters to lead off the charge to go open the door. I just have chosen Clovis semi-randomly, but also I was like, well, I feel like he thinks he's a leader. I don't think he's really the leader of the group. I think Anne's the leader of the group, but she likes to let Clovis believe that he's the leader of the group. And also, while I'm here, I'll just point out that I had accidentally given Clovis the sledgehammer in the setup video. Um, I did annotate it, uh, but yeah, I actually meant for him to have the short sword and for Samson to have the hammer. So I have made that change. I did that before I started playing. But yes, so we're going to start off with Clovis. And again, me being one player, I get to choose the order that these, uh, player, these characters come into play. So um, on a character's turn, now we're in the player phase, a character is going to do three actions, as I mentioned before. And those three actions can be any combination of these things. They can move one zone, they can search in a building, 
uh, they can only do that once per once per turn, so that's like a limitation there. Uh, they can open a door, they could reorganize or trade their items, they can do some combat, they could do some enchantment, they can uh, take, an, uh, take or activate an objective, I mentioned that earlier. They could just make noise to try to distract the zombies, or they could choose to do nothing. So here we are with Clovis, he's feeling pretty manly, he's going to have three actions, and... Even when I'm playing with other people, sometimes I get confused about which actions I've taken. So I just have these counters that I use with my math students. These are like positive negative counters. And for every action I take in this video, I'm just going to flip one of these over so that I know how many actions each of my characters have taken. So uh, for Clovis, I'm going to have his first action be to move one space to there. And his second action is going to be to try to open this door. Now, with the zombie invasion, everybody has locked the door, so you kind of have to bust it open. So his first action was to move. His second action is going to be to attempt to open the door. Now, in order to open the door, you have to have a weapon that has this little door opening icon here. And this is showing us that in order for me to open the door with the short sword, I'm going to need to roll a die, and I need to get a four on there and it's gonna make some noise as I try to bust open this door. So my attempt to bust open the door, I'm gonna take one of these dice, and I'm gonna roll it, and I'm gonna hope for a four. Now, if you've never watched my channel before, I am the worst roller, which is part of why I have avoided making this kind of a game video. But, at least you guys will get to witness this. Here we go, I need a four, five, or six. Nice, a two. So that was unhelpful. But even though I did try and I failed, uh, I still made some noise, and so I'm gonna add a noise token here to say, hey, zombies, come kill me, because I'm super loud. And so, with Clovis' third action, he's gonna try to open the door again. And, yay, we did it. Okay, good news there. So, even though I was successful, it still took some noise. I'm gonna take this token and flip it up, and I need to add a noise token. So lots of noise happening over here. This is quite an attractor. And the first time you open any door to a building, so there were two different doors here. Now that I'm opening this, you're gonna check to see how many uh, rooms there are in that building. You can kind of tell that they have walls here. So this particular building has two rooms. And I'm gonna draw one yellow card for each of the rooms of that building. And we are gonna spawn how many zombies this card tells us to. But before we do that, it's important to notice that every character has an experience point level. Everybody starts at zero, which is in this blue zone right here. That's important because as I draw this card, we are gonna look at the blue zone thing. And I should have specified, I was starting with this room right here. So in the blue zone, nothing was in sight. So as I was gonna go spawn some zombies, there was no zombies in that room. So if there had been one, even one character at all in the yellow zone, we would have had to put four zombies in there, four walkers. If we had been in the orange zone, we would have had to put three runners. And if we had been in the red zone, we would have put two runners. So this is kind of what I was saying about opening the big room. In the blue zone, you have more chances that less scary stuff happens. So for this room, there were no zombies. But for this room, oh man, there's a necromancer. Okay, well, we didn't get a normal spawning happening. All right, let's talk about the necromancer for a second. When the necromancer shows up, you need to grab one of these spawn tiles that kind of looks like one of these spawn tiles, but on the back side, it has a necromancer token. Essentially, the necromancer enters the board, and let me grab his model. He's coming into the board now, uh, and he's entering this space. The necromancer's goal is to get uh, out of the board. If he can get out of the board, things are going to get a lot worse for us, and I'll explain more about that in a little bit. I'm trying to not overwhelm you, but for now, we spawn a necromancer, and when a necromancer comes onto the board, he also brings some zombie friends. So I need to flip over a third card to bring, and I believe this tells us on here, let's look, spawn a necromancer with its necromancer spawn zone, which we just did, all necromancers already on the board gain an extra activation. We've only got the one. Uh, if you have expansions, you might have more uh, necromancers, but we don't know. So I'm going to spawn this one. Oh, gosh. It is a double spawn. Now, super funny and crazy that we are getting this situation right now. This actually is not covered in the rule book, but uh, after I did some research, this has come up several of my playthroughs. I wish it was in the rule book. So we have spawned the necromancer, which means we needed to spawn a zombie. 
We got this card which says double spawn. We don't spawn the zombies here. Spawn two zombie cards on the next zone. That will make more sense when we're doing a regular zombie spawning. Uh, but my best understanding is for now we need to draw two new cards and we'll spawn them. Let's draw them one at a time. Okay, so we're going to get one fatty. Gosh, this is hell. Uh, and a no one. All right. So good, good news is nobody else was there, but this necromancer did bring one fatty zombie with him. So I have grabbed that. This is what has happened when we open the door. These guys are now aware that we exist. Um, thanks a lot, Clovis. So before I pick my next character to go, remember that he's done with his turn now. And this fatty is going to make his way towards us to attack us. And the necromancer, he's not really out to fight us. He is out to escape. He's going to try to come out and go to the closest escape, which is going to be this spawn over here. Let's just quickly talk about the consequences of that and why I'm going to try to stop it. Uh, if he by chance manages to escape before I can kill him, this is going to turn over and now we're going to have an extra place where zombies are going to enter the board. If I can kill him off, then we get to remove this space and we don't have an extra space for zombies to come out. So that's going to be good incentive for me to get in there and kill him. Uh, let's talk about who I want to go next. Probably my girl, Anne. Anne's turn. Um, and I decided the tokens will fit better if we go this way. The reason why I'm choosing Anne next is she has the special ability called Bloodlust. Basically what that says is that Anne can use one action to move two spaces and attack. She's just like going to run in there and attack. And so uh, that's my plan is I want to use Bloodlust Melee if I can. And while we're looking at that, let me just point out again in the rulebook. Whoa, I am zoomed in a lot closer than I thought. There's an entire index of these different abilities right here. So if you see a keyword you don't understand, you could look up Bloodlust Melee and it explains it right there. So for Anne, for her first action, I'm just going to have her move one space. And that will put her right here. And for her next action, she is going to use this ability, which again, looking it up in the book, says she can move two spaces and attack for one action. So that's going to allow me to move her one, two, and when you are doing a melee attack, you have the option to choose who you're attacking. She's going to stand right here and she's going to go after that necromancer. No way that she wants this guy to survive. So now that Anne's going to make an attack, let's talk about what attacking does. When you're going to make an attack, you have to pick one of your weapons. you are got to fight these guys with a weapon. Luckily, we all start with one. When you're going to attack with a weapon, uh, this is a melee weapon. That's what that shows right there. And to use it, it has to be equipped in your hand. That's what this is. You can kind of see there's like a little hand etching there. She came with that equipped. This weapon does not cause any noise unless I'm using it to open a door. To use this weapon, you have to be on the same space. They have to have a range of zero. You're going to use one die to make the attack, and uh, you need to roll a four or higher in order to hit your target. And if we do that, if we're successful, we're going to do one damage. Now, the reason why the number of damages matters is, as you look at the bottom of the rule book, I pointed out that there's this helpful guide here. Uh, this is called the targeting priority order thing. That's kind of talks about targeting when you're using ranged weapons. So if by chance she was attacking with a ranged weapon, uh, she would have to hit the regular guys first, and then fatty or abominations next, and then runners, and then the necromancers last. But she's not. She's just using a melee attack, which means she gets to choose who she's going after. So she's attacking the necromancer. It takes one action to kill him. Uh, or sorry, that's one action. Uh, when he activates, he has one action. It takes one minimum damage to destroy, which is what this is saying here. This is going to do one damage to the person that we're hitting. And you have to be able to do the damage in one blow. And I mention that because the fatty takes two damages to kill. I cannot kill a fatty with this sword. No matter how many times I hit that fatty, this sword is just not strong enough to take him out. And it's not good enough to take out the abomination either. But it takes one damage to destroy, and I'm going to get one experience point, that's this tracker down here, uh, by doing that. So, again, since I'm going after the necromancer, I'm going to roll a die. I need to get four or better to do a damage, and I'll get in a, a gain an experience point if I'm successful. So here we go, and let's make this bloodlust a real good one. I'm going to roll. Awesome. Okay, we got a five. I'm going to try to do this right now while I'm remembering. 
and she managed to kill the necromancer, which was one of our goals for the entire game. We had to kill a necromancer, so that's out of the way. I still need to get all of the objectives and kill an abomination. But since I killed this guy, this spawning zone is going to come off the board. And as much as I would love to have Anne do a search action, uh, you can't search in a room where there are zombies. So I'm going to have Anne just move. She's going to backtrack one this way, and that'll be her final action. So, next issue that we're going to have is that um, the only person that has the ability to kill this fatty is Samson, because he has this hammer, and the hammer is the only weapon out there right now that can do a damage of two. So, what we're kind of doing is we're, we're almost stalling in here. I'm going to basically, I think what I'm going to do is just send everybody in here to search for a weapon, because fatty's not going to move until after everybody else has taken their turn. So I'm not sure that it matters who I choose to go right now. Uh, let's just send Samson in there um, for now. So he's going to go one, two into this building. And here's that hammer I was mentioning. So for him to use the hammer, he has to be in the space with the person. He's going to roll one die, four or better, but it will actually do two damage. Other than that, it's basically the same as the uh, as a sword. So he's going to do two actions just to move into the building. And for his third action, I'm going to have him search in that building, hopefully get a good item. So again, even though there's a zombie in this building zone, the zone is empty over here. So he's just going to go ahead and search right there. Let's just open, uh, or not open, we're going to draw this red card. These are the different items. And it looks like he got a transmutation. This is an enchantment. I mentioned that was one of the uh, things that he could do. This causes noise because he's like reading something. So right now this says, once per turn, the survivor discards an equipment cart of your choice, uh, oh sorry, of your choosing from his inventory, then draw an equipment card uh, for him. He can reorganize his inventory for free. This is not a search action. Whoa, whoa, focus. Um, the ah card is played as usual. So there's a card in here that means that you didn't find anything, you just found a zombie. But for now, we're going to go ahead and add this. This goes into his hand. And if I had had a better card that like was in his other hand, I could have just put this in his backpack to hold on to it for when I wanted to use it. But for now, I can go ahead and put that there. I can't use this right now because I'm all out of actions, uh, but that was Samson's turn. What I think I'm going to do next, and I probably should have done before, is I'm going to bring Nellie in. And the reason why I'm bringing Nellie in is that she's actually going to get a free move action. Like, she can move. She gets plus one action if you use it to move. So let's go ahead and use that right now. And the ability I'm referring to is this one right here that says she has one plus one free move action. So that was a free move. She hasn't used any of these yet. And then she will move into here for one action. And for her second action, she's actually going to reveal this objective. Oh, I don't know if that flipped over or if it didn't. The reason why I wanted to do this early is because I want to get this objective out of the way. Um, but if by chance it's the blue laboratory objective, then that's going to spawn some pretty crappy stuff. So I just wanted her to get in there now so that I have an option to maybe combat whatever it is. I don't know if that flipped over or not, but okay, good. So we just unveiled that objective. So she moved, activated an objective, and if you remember right, in the rule book, by getting those objectives, that puts you up five experience points. So she's actually going to probably want to be careful with killing too many zombies in the next little while, because as soon as any character ends up in yellow, you start looking at the yellow zombie activations, which are scary. I'd really like to get to that big room while everybody's in the blue space and cross my fingers that I can pull that off. Who knows if I can, but I'm really going to try. So then for her third activation, she's going to go ahead and search. For her search, we're going to draw this card. Oh, good, it's a torch. All right, so it says, draw two cards when searching, as long as I have this torch in my hand, and spend an action, discard the torch from your hand, and select a dragon bile token. So if you remember right, uh, we're going to have to kill an abomination at some point, so I'm still searching for some dragon bile, but we're going to need a torch to light that thing on fire. That's why I'm super glad to have this. Um, and so it says that we can light that stuff on fire if it's zero to one spaces away. Uh, but for now, I can put this in her hand, and we need to make sure we really protect her and that torch. So that was the end of Nelly's turn. Next up, let's send Baldrick in. So he'll go one, two, so that was two actions there. And then let me just point out that he has a spell. I actually didn't give him a sword, I gave him a spell, which works kind of like the sword, but it actually causes noise and it has some range. He can actually attack one space away. 
The reason why I gave him that is his special ability that he has right now is called Spellcaster. And Spellcaster is um, basically, it's, a, it's an extra action if you wanted to cast a spell. But remember, there's only the fatty on the board, so no sense in casting this spell. So I'm just going to use his last action to go ahead and search. So, searching in that room... Oh, nice, he got a spell, which is great for him. Well, it's an enchantment, I guess it's not a spell. So this enchantment, once per turn, uh, select a target zone that the, sorry, select a target zone the survivor can see, then a destination zone at range one from it, uh, sharing uh, an open path. So I can't really use this closed door, for example. Um, and one zone farther from the survivor. Zombies standing in the target zone are pushed to the destination. So he could push people away. Uh, this guy can't go away right now because of that blocking door. Um, but this is a nice thing to hold on to. And so he'll just keep it in his hand until he finds something different or better. Finally, we'll go ahead and have Silas, our ranged character, go. So he's going to go one, two, like that. And his final action will be also to search... The reason why I'm not using his ranged short bow is because even though he could go after Fatty, the ranged short bow only does one damage. And remember, Fatties need two damage to kill, and it has to happen in one shot. So he's just going to go in there, and I'm going to go ahead and search. Oh my gosh, Dragon Bile. Okay, that's great. Last time I played this, this was like at the bottom of the deck. So I'm really glad to have this. He's going to hold on to this with his dear life. This says spend an action uh, and discard the Dragon Bile from the hand. Put a Dragon Bile token on, range zero. So if we come across an Abomination, I am seriously so lucky on this right now. He's going to hold on to that. I'm so happy. He could just put this in his backpack for now, but we'll just let him keep it in his hand until he finds something better to replace it with. So that's going to bring us to the end of the second phase of the first round. So we just did our player phase. All of the characters have now taken their action. Everybody's moved. Everyone's picked something up except for Clovis because he sucks at opening doors. Um, but even if he didn't suck at opening doors, he would only get in there, not be able to draw anything, whatever. But now what we're going to do is we're going to enter the zombie phase, which means we need to activate, um, attack, or move each of the zombies. And it kind of gives you some breakdown here. And then what we need to do is spawn some new zombies. So if you look down here, it says that fatties get one action. So basically what that means is this fatty, if he was on a space with some survivors, he would attack one of those survivors. But he's not. So what he's going to do instead is he's going to move to where there's the most noise. Now each of the survivors counts as a noise token. And there are these noise tokens over here. So zombies always move towards what they are seeing and then if they could see multiple places, they go towards what's noisiest. But either way, this guy is just going to move over here. And that's his one activation. He actually can't attack anybody because that was his one activation. So probably the first thing I'm going to have to do is have Samson attack that guy. Let's kill him as quickly as we can. So all of the zombies on the board have now activated. We just had that one. And after that, we need to spawn. So you're going to point to a spawn zone and say, hey, I'm spawning here. We're going to draw a card. So we'll draw this card here. We're still in blue. <sighs> no one. I love it. Yes, this is why I want to get to that big room and open it while everyone's in blue. Next spawn zone will have it be this one. What's going to spawn? Okay, one runner. So I'm going to grab a runner and put him in this spot over here. And the final spawn zone, I'm just drawing a card. Oh, gets a necromancer. So same thing that happened before. I'm going to grab a necromancer tile. It goes right here. I'm going to pick up the necromancer. He goes here. I'm going to spawn some new ones in a second, but first I have to figure out where is he going. So this spawn zone, because that's what he's trying to exit, not the same spawn zone, but somewhere else. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six to get to that one, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get to that one. So this guy is going to head this way, which sucks. That's dangerous. I might need to send at least one person down this way to take care of that guy. Maybe I'll send my ranged character, because he can kind of wait. But yeah, this guy is going to try to escape over there. But I need to not forget, he needs to spawn with another zombie with him. Uh, oh, there's our abomination. Okay, so this necromancer comes into play. He has an abomination. The abomination is going to come after us. The necromancer is going to try to escape. But the seriously, insanely lucky thing is, I have the bile and I have a torch. 
I could take these guys out relatively simply. I just have to move into place. So we'll talk more about that in just a minute. But just know I got so crazy grossly lucky that we had those things so early on. I have never been that lucky in my life. <sighs> but that's okay. So that was uh, the end of the spawn step. Next thing we have to do is at the end of every round, you're just going to clean up any noise tokens that were there before. That noise kind of uh, becomes non-valid. So now that all the zombie things have happened, we moved the zombies that were on the board, plus we spawned zombies. Next thing that needs to happen is uh, you pass the first player token. So if there were multiple players, you would pass that first player token clockwise around the board, and then you're going to do it all again. Uh, the, whoever has the first player token, they would pick one of their characters to activate, and so on. Where it's just me, I'm going to say that I want uh, Samson to go ahead and see if he can kill that fatty. So for one action, he's going to go ahead and attack. Fatty is on the same space. I'm going to roll one die. I need four or more. And if I do do, do do that successfully, then we kill that guy. Oh, it was a five, but we got it. Man, my rolls are better than I told you they were going to be. I like it. So we just killed this guy, which gave Samson some experience. I like that. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have him try to open the vault door. Let's talk about that here now. So you may have noticed that in this room there's also this vault door in the floor and there's a yellow vault over here, this kind of room. Basically this is a room that's sealed off in this corner and the other corner of the board. You can enter the vault, go into the yellow tile and pop out through the other door if you open it. And inside of each of these vaults there is some really powerful item that I would love to have. So Samson is going to turn around, he killed that zombie with his hammer and he's just going to keep on hitting that door, see if we can open up that vault door. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this. I'm looking for a four or better, and it's going to make some noise. Oh my gosh, another five. That is freaking ridiculous. Which means that we made some noise, and we went ahead and opened up that door. And now, if I wanted to, I could send somebody down into the vault to pick up that item over there. We actually don't spawn zombies in the vault. It's been sealed off. Some zombies haven't been able to get in there. Uh, but if we go into the vault and out the other door, we would have to spawn zombies into that new building. Uh, but for now, we've just opened up that vault. For his final action, I'm going to have him go ahead and search. So his search gives us a repeating crossbow. Well, that's pretty nice. Let's take a look. I could use that next to him or one space away. I would roll three dice. And any time I get a five or more, that's going to be able to kill someone. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to this. And whenever you pick up a new card, you could do some rearranging for free. Usually that takes an action, but I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this. And my plan is, so cards normally stick up in their backpack like this, but that's really hard for you guys to see. So I'm going to keep the backpack stuff to the side like that. So doing that search was the end of Samson's turn. I think what I'm going to do is, since Clovis hasn't picked up anything yet and he still thinks he's the leader, these guys are going to be like, sure, we'll let him go get the vault item. So he's going to go one, and then down into the door, two, and then as an action he's going to pick this thing up here. So he just picked up an Inferno spell. I'm not really sure how he feels about having the Inferno spell, but he has it anyway. It's a combat, which is great. Zero or one spaces away, he'll roll four dice, hit anything with a four, and does two damage. So it's actually pretty nice. He can go ahead and hold on to that in his hand, and he feels pretty proud of himself. And while the crew is tempted to just close the door on him to be mean, I think they're not going to. Uh, but that was his third action, because he moved into the building, and then he moved into the vault. And then uh, I'll also say you can't search in the vault. You can only pick up the card if it's in there. It's not technically a building. Uh, and then, so wait, he moved into the building, he moved into the vault, and then he picked up the card in the vault. So that was the end of Clovis's turn. So I do want to come get this building open. Uh, I have some options to do that. I could send some people this way to bust down that door and then work their way over there. But I kind of don't want to do that because as soon as I open this door, these zombies are just going to come in this way. So I kind of want to come out and around. I don't know if that's smart or not. But long-term thinking, I need to get Nelly and Silas. They have the dragon bile and the torch. I need them to start making their way down this way. So I do think that, let's see, Nelly has the torch. All right, let's have Nelly go next. I'm going to have her use her free action to go here. 
And then, let's see, I don't want her to get too close or too far away. So whether she, or not she uses the free move action, I think she's just gonna end up moving two more spaces. So I think she'll just come right here, and my plan is, so these guys are back here on this tile. I'm pretty sure that there is a line right here. So they're gonna move one space this next round, and then the next space. I'm planning on dropping the dragon bile and the torch right over here uh, when the guys are standing on top of it. Fingers crossed, not that everything always goes according to plan, but that's how I'm thinking. So with that in mind, let's have Silas go next, because he has the bile. And I'm just gonna have him go ahead and move three spaces. So he'll just go one, two, three. If I was being really smart, maybe I would have searched first. Should I have had, I think I would have had Nelly search before she moved. Yeah, do you know what? I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit. Again, kind of tricky to track. I'm gonna have her search first and then free move and then one, two to end up here. He's gonna search and then go one, two, because again, they have two turns before they need to drop the bile and throw the torch. So this is gonna be for Nelly's search action. Um, oh, great, she got a dagger. Okay, I like that. Nelly actually has this neat ability where she can store up here as like an armor slot, um, but it says that this slot may hold a dagger instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the dagger right there. Glad she got that. And for Silas's draw, oh, another short bow. Uh, not overly helpful, but we have it. So I'll just go ahead and put this in his backpack, which again, I'm kind of putting right here so you guys can see a little bit better. So things are getting a little bit tricky. I still have Anne and Baldrick to go. I'll have Baldrick go first. I want him to search so that he can look for something useful, probably. But I also really want to get this door open. I could go one, two, three. Or I could go one, open the door, see if I'm successful or not, and search. But then again, like I said, when we spawn, that's going to invite, that's going to invite them entering there. I'd like them to have to walk around if they're gonna go down into the vault. So maybe what I'll do is I'll have Baldrick search and then go one, two. So let's have him search first. He picked up Chain Lightning. Okay, so this is a combat spell. This actually came in the expansion, I could tell because of the crest. So this is a combat spell. Uh, he's gonna roll six and he adds a die. Oh yes, if, if for any six, yeah, any sixes that he rolls, he adds a die to that roll. Um, and then, that's why it's a chain lightning thing. Uh, yeah, and so it kind of affects people in that way. Cool. Uh, let's hold on to this. And I'm going to put this in my hand. So again, when you pick up an item, you can do a free rearrange action. Uh, this is going in the backpack, which I am putting right here. So he searched, and then I'm going to have him move two spaces. And just to re-emphasize, because it's an easy rule to forget, you can only search once per turn. So one, two, he's going to come out this way. And I'll go ahead and have Anne do the same thing. Let's have her search, see if she can get anything good. Ooh, a hand crossbow. Okay, so this uh, requires, oh, so we, okay, sorry. Hand crossbow, bolts. We have one action to reload, and then free in the end phase. Uh, let's put this in her player area, and then we'll talk more about this one. So the hand crossbow, oh yeah, we searched. So the hand crossbow is pretty powerful. It could be ranged, it's silent, you roll two dice, but you're hitting on a three or more, so it can do a lot of things. Uh, the issue is that you need to reload this thing after you use it. So you would use one action to shoot it, and you need one action to reload it. But between rounds, this thing is going to reload itself, so you don't have to like track if you've reloaded it or not. Uh, basically, if you wanted to use this twice, you would have to do it twice in one turn at the beginning and at the end of your turn. So you would use it, reload, use it. And so she didn't have anything else. I forgot because she had just gone and killed that necromancer. And so she'll just go ahead and add that to her hand. And then I'll have her move the two places. So she'll come out here with Baldrick. All right. So we're kind of splitting off a little bit. We've got, we've got Anne and Baldrick over here. We have Clovis in the vault. We have Samson over here saying, Clovis, dude, hurry up. And then we have the other guys headed down to throw the dragon bile to kill the abomination. So that was the end of the characters phase, and now it's time for the zombie phase. So all the zombies on the board are going to move, and you usually need to do this like with a lot of people helping, but I've only got three zombies on the board, so that's great. The Abomination and the Necromancer each just move once, so they're going to move on to this space, no big deal. Runners always activate twice, so they're just speedy, 28 days later zombies. So these, this guy's going to go one, two. Heck, we might be able to catch him in the bile also if I play my cards right. That could be fun. 
And now that all of the zombies have moved, it is time to activate or to spawn. So I'm going to start there. Let's draw a card. One walker goes there. Let me just grab one. A walker comes onto that space. Nothing too scary. Onto this space over here is oh, a double spawn. So normally when you draw a double spawn, ignoring what we had witnessed before, uh, you're just going to continue around the board and you don't spawn anything here, but you're going to spawn two things on the next spot. And bear in mind, this is a spawn zone right now. So I got to spawn, let's start with the blue one. I'm going to spawn two there. So first one is uh, another necromancer thing. That sucks because we only have one necromancer from the base game. And so the necromancer is actually going to activate. So he moves there. And then we draw one more card because of the double spawn. And gosh dang it, that's a necromancer again. So he's moving again. I swear I shuffled these cards. <sighs> okay. And now, for the other spawn zone, that one gets two walkers. All right, so let's grab two walkers. I'm going to put them right here. I know that's kind of hard to see that on camera, but we'll just keep doing the best that we can. I'm kind of pissed off, though, that this necromancer has gotten away from that. I might have to have Silas come uh, shoot him in the back with an arrow or something like that. So with that, we kind of have to prioritize. Who do we want to go first? Um... Hmm. I really want to get that door opened. One, two. It's going to take somebody going up there. Do you know what? Maybe, maybe we're going to start off with Anne. Okay, the plan is to start off with Anne because she can go one, two, and attack for one action and then try to open the door. Let's start there and then I'll worry about this malarkey here in just a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with a good old fashioned bloodlust uh, action. So remember for this, she gets to go two spaces and do an attack against that fool. I'll have her go ahead and use, I think I'm going to have her use her short sword. Oh yeah, because it has to be melee. Duh. So yeah, I'm going to have her use her short sword for this. And uh, so I'm going to grab one die. What do we got? Oh, boo, one. Okay, so I didn't kill that guy on that turn. Let's just go ahead and try again with another attack. <sighs> okay, this is the rolling that, you know, we thought we would have. I was really hoping to bust down the door. Apparently not. Uh, okay, we'll go ahead and do it another one. I'm going to roll it this time. <sighs> Finally. So that was rough, but we got this guy out. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I give her an experience point. So she's up to two. And now I kind of have a tough choice. The problem is I could bust down this door. So like I could send um, a Baldrick two spaces and try to break down that door. If we're successful, great. We're gonna be able to open up all of these spaces. We'll, we'll load them up with zombies using the blue flame level, which is, you know, not a lot of zombies. The problem is, then I don't really have any way to defend myself. Um, so if something scary pops up right here, they're just gonna come after these two and um, eat them. So is this really the best time to be doing that? Probably not, but I really don't want to stall forever and ever and ever. I want to get that door open. So let's go ahead and go one, two. We'll try to get this door open, and I'll bring I'll bring these these fellas over. So that was two here, and then oh dang it, he can't even crap or frap or I forgot that he doesn't have the ability to even open the door. All right, so he'll just hang out there. Dang, I gotta think this through more carefully, and he can't really do anything else, um, I guess he will do nothing for his last action. I forgot. Poop. Well, I'm not exactly sure what I want Samson to do. Some options are he could come here for one, try to bust down the door for two, and if he's not successful, he's stuck there. But if he is successful, put him over here onto this space so we're ready to kind of like bust in there uh, for three. Yeah. The other thing we could do is do another search action, but... Why don't we do this? Let's go one, uh, and then we'll try to get the door open. So I'm going to go ahead and roll a die. I need a four to open the door. Oh, there's a six. That does get the door open. It also makes a noise. I think I forgot. I think this noise token was from last round. I should have removed it. Uh, but we'll go ahead and put that there now. And might as well position myself to be ready to go. Okay, so that was Samson's turn. Um, let's think for Clovis' turn. I'm not going to have him go out the other side. I'm going to have him come back in this way. One, two, and he's going to stay there and he's going to search again. 
So I won't even show you his player. Oh, maybe we will look at his player board. Okay, we got a great sword. I like that. So uh, I want to hold on to this Inferno spell because like that was a nice vault item. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the short sword, put it in his backpack over here. He had moved twice and then searched. Just take a look at this cool sword. So you do need five to open a door, but you get to roll five dice. You hit on a five or more, so not as good as a four or more, but you're rolling five dice and it does one damage. So he can kind of take these big, whoosh, that's, that's my sword, whoosh, motions and, you know, hurt people. So here's my concern. Um, Nelly has the torch. Uh, Silas has the bile. If Nelly throws the torch onto the bile and kills the abomination, she's going to get a bunch of experience points for that, which you think would be a great thing, but she's already got five experience points. So that's going to push her into the yellow zone so I'm nervous about that. So what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have Silas come down here. For his second action, I'm going to have him drop this Dragon Bile. So it says spend an action and discard Dragon Bile uh, from the hand. Put Dragon Bile token at range 0 to 1. So I'm going to have him go ahead and drop the Dragon Bile right here. Um, we could get the Abomination onto that spot and probably this runner over here too. Now, as I mentioned, I don't want Nelly to get five more points, so for his final action, I'm going to have him take the torch away from Nelly, and he'll load it in right there, so that he's the one that's going to be killing all the monsters, and that will give him experience points, and it won't give Nelly the experience points, which, since I'm playing well alone, that's fine. Uh, it just seems like the smarter way to do that, yes, so that we can open that one building and not have so much horror happening. And then finally for Nelly, we have got to get this guy. She has a sword and a dagger, neither of which are ranged. Um, but the concern is if I actually move onto this space, this runner is going to come after Nelly and get her one. Because if Nelly's here, even if she manages to kill this guy, let's assume that I can, this runner is going to activate twice. He's going to move and then he's going to bite at her um, and not end up standing in the bile. But... I think in the interest of trying to kill that necromancer, it's probably worth it before he continues on that way and is lost forever. Let's double check her dagger. So her dagger is up here in this armored space, uh, and it says that you gain plus one die with another equipped melee weapon. So uh, it doesn't make any noise. I am going to use the dagger then instead. I think she's kind of swinging with both hands here. And so we're going to use the dagger because she has another melee weapon, and that's going to let us roll two dice. Um, oh, do you know what? She actually has another move action, doesn't she? Okay, that's good. I can back up. Okay, that's fine. So I moved once for free. I moved a second time with this. I am now going to attack, and since I'm using the dagger with another melee weapon, I get to roll two dice, and I'm looking to get... Oh, <laughs> do I count that? No, I'm going to regret it, though. Guys, I should have counted that. Oh, dang it! I knew I was gonna... Oh, my freak. Should have kept that stupid four. Ugh. Okay, so then we're gonna do a final action where I try that one more time. Come on. A three and a six. Okay, that's good, but I didn't get out of the way. So I did manage to kill the Necromancer, and I don't think I said this with the last Necromancer's kill, but when you kill a Necromancer, you could choose to just flip this tile over and destroy a different spawn zone. That's usually helpful in different scenarios, it's kind of like a puzzly aspect of the game, but when we destroy this Necromancer, I'm just going to get rid of that spawn zone there. And I'll acknowledge, yes, I'm leaving myself susceptible to this runner, but what else are you going to do? So, those stupid dice. Uh, we got one experience point. She's got to try to avoid killing people until I open that next door. Come on. And with that, that was the end of the humans phase. So now it is the zombies phase. First, you start by moving the zombies that are on the board already. So, this guy's going to move one. He's standing in the bile. These are two walkers. They each move one. And this runner activates twice. So he moves. And now that he's on the spot with Nelly, he activates and she doesn't have any actual armor to defend herself with. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about that. Essentially, let's pretend like this was some kind of armor. Uh, since she's being attacked once, she would get a roll dice equal to the number of, attack, of attacks she's taking. She would get a roll, and the armor would have like a value. And if this die was higher than that value, she would uh, be able to block that damage. But she doesn't have that. So as it is, she's going to take a damage, which means I'm going to move this over here. 
As soon as you take three damages or any character takes three damages, they die. They're totally out of the game. And when all of the characters are dead, the, the survivors lose. Okay, now it's time for the zombies to spawn. So for this spot right here, we are going to draw no one. I like that. That's good news. For this zone over here, we are getting one fatty. There he is. And then for this zone down here, we are getting uh, a double spawn. Okay, so the super annoying part about this is this is the last spawn zone, but what we need to do is wrap back around to the first one and double spawn up here. So now we have a fatty in the midst. Uh, that sucks. And one more, another fatty. Boo. Okay, so more people for them to think about. But that does bring us to the end of the round, so all I need to do is clean up the noise token. No first player token to pass. We'll just continue on. I'm going to have Samson, Samson go first, because I'm going to have him try to take out those two fatties for his turn. So for his first action, he's going to go ahead and attack uh, one of those fatties. He's got to use his hammer to do that. So let me grab a die. Oh, yep, there's a six. Okay, we got one of them. Before I forget, I'll give myself some experience points. So we'll take this guy off of the board, and that doesn't create noise for um, attacking. So let's try one more time. I forgot to mark that. Okay, so our second attack. Boo. All right, so we're going to try again. I've really got to get this guy. Four. Okay, good. Uh, give ourselves an experience point. He's up to three. We got this guy off the board, and that was the end of Samson's turn. Next, I was kind of thinking about sending Clovis one and then two to try to bash the door. But right now he's holding on to that long sword, which makes it harder to open the doors. I really wanted someone else to open the door to let Ann in. I mean, if he was a real gentleman. So this guy, uh, Baldrick, can't open the door. So I think I'm going to have to have Ann try to bust open that door. So she's going to go next. So let's have Ann start by trying to open the door with her sword. Ooh, I'll take it this time. I'll take it. It was on there. It's Yeah, we're good. That did create some noise, but we got the door open, and now it is time to spawn this whole building. So for every single uh, spot on this building, we need to spawn stuff. So let's just start here, and I'll work my way like a book. How about that? All right, so for the first base, we spawn a walker. That's not scary, and can take care of that. All right, oh, that's a runner. My bad. Okay, a walker. Next, we've got this room, which is going to be nothing. Next, the room with the vault door for the purple vault. Nothing. I love it. Okay, next, this room right here. A runner. All right, so there's that guy. Oops, struggling, struggling. And we'll get this corner room. Next, two walkers in there. Again, just keep in mind, this could have been so much worse if I had a yellow zone going on. Uh, we'll just continue this way, not like a book. Okay, how about this room? This room is a walker. This room right here is two walkers. One, two. And this room right here gets a necromancer. Ugh, crappy, crappy poopies. So we'll spawn that guy in there. He comes here, but he gets another spawn card with a fatty. And finally, this room over here gets a double spawn. Um, wait, what did I decide last time? Okay, so there was no, uh, no double spawn here, but there is no other room. So I think I just double spawn this room. Another double spawn. And really quickly, as I was just double checking to make sure I knew my double spawns correctly. Okay, this one was a double spawn. What I needed to do is go back to the first one. When I drew for that first one, it got another double spawn. So this room right here actually gets four cards drawn for the two double spawns awaiting it, right? I think so, hold on. So this guy had a double spawn, which means it needed to come up here. When I drew the first one, it was a double spawn. So that's gonna go to that room, but I needed to draw my one more spawn right here, which would be a no one. Okay, I got lucky. So that took care of that card. But then this one gets a double spawn. Oh my gosh, this is not my favorite part of the game. So we got a walker here, and then uh, a fatty. All right. 
Well, that ended the double spawn mayhem. So I'll have to go back and double check what I did over there. I honestly can't remember. I'm, I, I feel like I did it okay though, because it was a necromancer, whatever. Okay, we have opened the door. That was Anne's first action. For her second action, uh, let's see, do I stand? I think probably what I wanna do is stand, well, hmm. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say is, what if I stood in the doorway and shoot into here to kill this guy? The the problem, or lady, I don't know. Uh, probably a lady. Yes, lady. The Okay, so let's talk about line of sight. So line of sight, you could see, uh, you could see through streets in any direction where you're standing. So if she was standing here, she could see this way or this way or this way. When you're standing next to a door or not, you could see into the first, like if the door's open, you could see into the first room of that building. So she does have line of sight for this chick here, but not for these guys back here, if she wanted to use that hand crossbow. But remember, it has to like reload, and that's kind of obnoxious. But I could, like I could shoot this um, zombie with a, the crossbow, and then use my bloodlust to go one, two, and attack these guys in here. Uh, it's not a bad idea, but it is a little bit risky because if things don't go the way I want to, let's say she ends up in this room, kills this zombie, well, this zombie's going to attack her, and this runner is going to attack her as well. So probably not the best thing to do. What I think I'll do instead is let's just do bloodlust melee into that room. So this will, oh, this will be my second action, right? Yeah, and I didn't move her into that room, but I meant to. And we're just using our short sword for that. Oh, three, crap. Well, I did end up in this room. Um, what I think I'll do now is I have a better shot at hitting either her in that room or I could shoot into the next room over because I can see into it right now. I'm going to be rolling two dice, three more, so I have a better chance of hitting if I use this thing here. Um, and I won't need to re reload it because this is her last action. So let's use her hand crossbow in the same room. So I'm going to use two dice. I'm looking for threes or betters. I'm just attacking in my... Should I attack in my same room? I kind of feel like I should attack in the next room over and let somebody else come rescue me. Yes, yes. Let's attack in the room one over. That's what I'm going to do. I won't be able to kill the fatty because I can only do one damage, but I could kill that boring walker that's over there. Um, yes. Okay, cool. So she gained an experience point for that. This would need to be reloaded, but it's going to reload at the end of her turn anyway. And she was able to take out this walker over here. That will let somebody else come in and take care of this one that's in the same room with her. So speaking of, who's that someone going to be? Uh, let's have Clovis come on over. So he's going to go one two and he just runs in there yelling and he's like i'm gonna protect Anne." and she just rolls her eyes she's like i don't need you to protect me um but i guess she's grateful as long as he's gonna swing that big sword so five dice we're gonna hit on fives or more i just need one success and he moved twice and then it's doing this oh yeah yeah i keep forgetting this i probably forgotten a lot of times he gets an extra die because he's doing a melee so we actually get six dice that's pretty cool and yeah, I think we took care of that zombie pretty well. So he finally gets a kill. Oh, can I do this? There we go. And this zombie is out. And what I think Baldrick is gonna do is he's gonna put himself in a little bit of danger. He's gonna go one, two, three. And the reason why he's doing that is now he is in this room and I'm gonna have him just go after this walker. And you think, wait, but you're out of turns. And that's kind of true. He did move three, but remember he has Spellcaster, which means he gets to cast a spell as a free action. So why don't we go ahead and try this Chain Lightning. Uh, I'm going to roll three dice. I'm looking for fives or better to hit, and it's just going to do one damage, but if I roll a six, I get to roll another die. So let's see, we're rolling three dice. And we did roll a six. We killed the walker, so uh, that's totally fair. That's going to kill off this runner. Now, my understanding is, even though I could roll another die, because I was fighting in this zone, that's really the end of it. I could roll another die, but nothing would really happen. Um, the chain lightning, I think, happens in whatever zone you're actually, like, psh, chain lightninging in. So, probably had... I considered actually aiming into this room to kill both of these guys, 
but I didn't want that runner to activate twice while I was standing right here, because then Baldrick would have taken two hits. So just out of curiosity to see how awesome I would be, because I got that six, so let's roll. No, yeah, I wouldn't have done, I wouldn't have done much, but that was Baldrick's turn. I thought that was a pretty good turn. Next up is Nelly's turn, I think. Yeah, I mean, I could do this and have that whole thing happen, um, but let's just have Nelly go ahead and fight this runner. But really quickly before I do that, I just was looking at the board. I keep doing this. I think I did this earlier on too. I'm sorry. I just got excited to have Baldrick run in. Um, I should not have been allowed to do what I just did, but I'm not going to undo it because it was just too cool. Um, but, well, I mean, I could have. All right, here's, let's compromise. Here's the deal. When he moved one, two, three, he should not have been able to do that. Once you enter a space with a zombie, it would have taken him one action to move into the next room, plus an additional action for every other zombie that was in that space. I think that I backed up with Anne over in this space too. I'll annotate that, I'm sorry. So basically, Baldrick should have only been able to come in here, one, two, and then to use his chain lightning in the next room, because he wouldn't have had enough actions to move out. So I'm gonna stick Baldrick in here, and then he would have chain lightning into that room, and the fatty's going to be attacking him. Sorry, that is a very straightforward rule that I keep forgetting, and I'm gonna try not to. It was on my mind because I was thinking about having Nelly come down here and fighting these guys, uh, but no, let's just have her stay right there. She's using her dagger to attack, which remember, when it's equipped with another melee weapon, uh, we can go ahead and roll an extra die. And so let's roll these. Th oh, really? That's stupid. Well, she was unsuccessful there. Let's have her try again. <laughs> okay, more successful that time, but that does launch us into the yellow zone. I'll go pull off that zombie in a second, but what that means is we're gonna take one of these markers and we put it down here, and now she has an extra action. I just realized I only have three action chips, but I will figure something out. For now, I got this guy killed, yay me, um, and I, don't think I want to do anything else. I don't want to open this door because if I open this door, the Necromancer and the Fatty are going to come out here and try to get to that spawn zone. Where they are now, they're going to have to walk out and around that way to get to the spawn zone. Oh, you can't see my finger. Out and around that way to get to the spawn zone at the top. I kind of would like to keep it that way. So I think she's just going to stay there. But she does have two more actions, doesn't she? So she has two more moves, one of, and a free move action. I haven't done my free move action yet. But that guy over there, over there is a fatty hidden. Should have cropped this picture better. So let's think. If she moved her, used her free action to move here, well, then it would take two moves to get down there, and then she's just stuck with two. Yeah, I really think the best thing for her to do is to not do anything. And I don't see a reason for her to move right now. Um, yeah, do you know what? We're going to call that good. For Silas's turn, his first thing that he's going to do is he is going to go ahead and torch. So spend an action, discard the torch from the hand, and select a dragon bile token at range 0 to 1, resolve a dragon fire. So basically what happens is this thing turns into a fire and anything on that space at all, good guy, bad guy, anything, they go up in flames, they die. We just killed an abomination, which was one of our goals for the game. Yay us, we still have a butt ton of objectives to do though. So after the little explosion, this thing goes away and comes off of the board. So that was one action. How about for action number two, what if we hop over here? So that movement was one, and then we're going to go ahead and shoot. And I don't remember if I've had to use this yet. I don't think so. For his, um, for his arrow, he is going to hit on a three or more. Uh, and he's going to shoot one space away, and I get to add an extra die to my roll. So let's go ahead and roll these, and hopefully I get both of these guys. That would be awesome. Um, oh, yeah, 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 and I forgot. I get five points for killing that one necromancer on that spot. Or not the necromancer, the abomination. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Could that have sucked any worse? Probably not. Okay, well, that was Silas's turn. So now we need to resolve zombie activation for that, those that are on the board. So these guys see Silas, they both move one. Fatty sees Nelly, he moves one. Fatty is on the space with Baldrick, he takes a damage. 
So he's got a damage finally. Oh, and I forgot to take care of that one runner that was going to come after him. Oop, come on. Bump over. There we go. He's got an experience point. And then this walker comes into this room. These walkers come over into this room because uh, they're making their way towards where they can hear stuff. So they're making their way towards the noisiest space on the board, which is these guys or these guys, but these guys are closer. Anyway, they're making their way that way. I'm going to remove this noise token before I forget. And these walkers are coming this way. These guys are coming this way like that. Okay, now we need to go ahead and spawn zombies. Let's start up here. First spawn is a double spawn. Holy cow. So now we're coming down here to spawn this one. We are looking at yellow this time, right? Yeah, we're going for yellow. So that gets two walkers. Okay, no bueno, but it gets another one. Oh, crap, four walkers. Okay, so there's two. <laughs> this got intense quickly. All right, lots of walkers. Where's that dragon bile again? And then this space down here is going to get uh, two runners. And then this spawn point right here is going to get a double spawn, which means we skip it and go back up to the uh, first one. So two spawns here. It gets three walkers and a fatty. All right. So let me grab three walkers. Oops. One, two, three walkers, and a fatty. All right, Samson is in big trouble um, now. But that was the end of the zombie's turn. I think I've removed all of the noise tokens. So let's go ahead and start with Samson, see if he can uh, prevent some of this crap from happening. And Clovis really can't move out of that space because he's surrounded by four zombies. And as I had mentioned before from my previous mistake, that would take one move action to get him out of that space, plus another four move actions to get him off that space because of the four zombies that are there. Obviously, he only has uh, three actions to use, so he's just stuck here. But let's have him go ahead and attack the fatty with his hammer. So I'm just going to grab one die, and we got a five. Good deal there. That'll go ahead and remove this guy off of the board. Oh, and take Clovis with him. And that earned him an experience point. Yay him. Now he could keep attacking with the hammer, but he's on a space with three walkers. And since this repeating crossbow is going to let him roll three dice, you know, they're only going to hit on a five or more. But, you know, there's a chance that with one action I could take out hopefully more than one of those guys. So let's start there. Um, ooh, good. Okay, so we got two sixes. That can take off two of those walkers. And finally, with this repeating crossbow, oh yeah, two walkers, one, two. What if we just go ahead and try that one more time? So we'll roll again. We're just shooting that repeating crossbow. And all right, so we only got one hit with that one. But that is enough to clear off that space there. And to get him into the yellow zone, which does earn him an additional action. So what I think we'll have him do with that additional action, um, yes, this video is taking me forever and ever to record. I have been to and from school, so I have more of these chips. I know I mentioned earlier I didn't have them, but I do now. So yes, he's got one of these chips. Let's use that to at least send him this way. Uh, he won't be able to get to that fatty now, but you know, he'll try. Uh, next up, what if we, crap. Yeah, nobody can take on that fatty right now, I don't think. Oh, no, that's not true. Clovis, remember Clovis got his special spell. He's very excited to use it. Uh, so let's have Clovis go next. And as much as he wants to use his great sword, uh, you know, in front of everybody, well, maybe I should. Mm, I have two options. I've really got to get this, this uh, zombie gone. So... Yeah, let's go ahead and use our combat spell. I am going to, I can attack one room away, uh, so that's fine. He is in the room next to uh, Fatty, or the space next to Fatty. So I'm going to roll four dice. I'm hitting on a four or more. That'll be a great spell. Okay, Clovis, show us what you're made of for once. Um, oh, that one's either a five or a six. We'll just call it a six. Um, but either way, that's hitting on a four or more. And he just got uh, that zombie there. Okay, very cool for him. Uh, that's good news. That does earn him an experience point. Oh, and I did use an action. And do you know what I think we'll do? Since this can... Hmm. Well, all right. I do need to add a noise token. 
So that happened in this room. What I think we'll do is let's have him come one space over to here. And then, uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. He'll go one space into here and then he'll use his combat spell again to attack those in that room. So he can't quite get into the room and use the great sword at the same time, but we can go into this room and do that same thing. We'll use our Inferno Awesome spell. Let's see. Holy cow, that was a great roll for me. Nice job. Uh, that's going to be one, two, three. Not quite into the yellow zone yet, but that's okay. That was awesome. He totally wiped out that room. I did not expect that. Um, <laughs> that is very cool, but kind of leaves a lot of space between here and there. So I got to decide what exactly the other people are going to do. Obviously, there are some options. But he did drop off another noise token in that room, just in case that's going to end up mattering. Okay, next. Uh, let's see, Anne could go... I could use her special to go one, two, but these guys are over here. So I'm going to have to have her move once, and then use her bloodlust melee to go down into this room. It is kind of putting her into dangerous territory, but I feel like it'll be worth it. So let's have her do that. One to uh, I am nervous Ooh, maybe this is okay she might have to back up depending on how this goes so she moved for one I mean I could stand in the other room and use this thing but one two well that's still gonna take me all three actions hmm I just like to use her bloodlust melee so much but maybe that's not the smartest thing especially with this here okay yeah let's let's move twice so remember, she started here, so one, two, she'll shoot into that room. How about that? So for her final action, she'll use this because then it can reset uh, between rounds. So she, oh, she gets to roll two dice. They're going to hit on a three or better. Okay, we just got one. Well, but that's one experience point. That's fine. And just in case it doesn't come up in the video, let's talk a little bit about targeting. I am going to end up removing this, but... Let's pretend that all of these guys here, the, the fatty, the necromancer, and the walker were all in the same room, and Anne shot into there. When you use a ranged weapon, you don't necessarily get to choose who gets hit. Um, in fact, let's just for the example's sake put Clovis in here too. So Anne would roll her dice, and essentially any hits that she would get would follow this targeting priority. They would first hit the walker, and then either the fatty or the abomination, after that a runner and a necromancer. So in this case where there's lots of people in here, there would not really be any luck at hitting the necromancer. And any misses would actually hit the good guys that are in that room. So hitting, you know, ranged, ranged is great to stay away from people, but there can be negative consequences to that if you're not careful. So I'll just reset it the way that it should be. And it looks like it's probably Baldrick's turn. So, well, I think we'll have Baldrick come down here for one. I was thinking about sending people to open this door and getting down to the room uh, at the bottom of this map, but let's, well, getting into the other vault, really. We'll, worry, we'll have those guys worry about that. But for now, we're going to send Baldrick one space that way. So that was one. And then he can do, he can cast the spell for free. So I'm going to just go ahead and cast this spell. This spell just seems stronger than this one, kind of. You get to roll three dice, but you only hit on a five. I'm just trying to hit one person, but I think I have a better shot with these ones. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these three right here. He's just aiming at that walker, and cool, we got him. So let me just give myself an experience point while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so that took out this walker here, and it added a noise token where Baldrick was, because he just used a spell to do that. So the next thing that I need to say is I've got two more actions. One option is to come down here and to use that same spell into this room. But remember, with targeting priority, that's going to hit Fatty. If I only get one success, it's going to hit Fatty and not do anything. If I get two successes, that's great. That's going to hit, one will hit Fatty, one will hit the Necromancer, and we take the, ne the Necromancer out. But if I'm not successful, if I only get zero or one hits out of the three dice that I roll, well, the crappy thing is that both of these guys are going to come this way, and I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. Because it's going to take Samson one, two, three moves to get down there. He's not going to be able to help out Baldrick. So that seems kind of dangerous. My other option is to come up this way. One, two. Oh, but I'd really like to get rid of that spawn zone if I can. But I could just come up here. 
So this one space, I was standing here, and get this objective token. Um, this could be the blue one. Yeah, let's do this anyway. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go one space, and then flip this over, and then I'll send these two guys into that room, and I'll, I'll bring Samson down here with, uh, with uh, what's her name? Anne. Okay, is this the blue one? No, it is not the blue one. Okay, good deal. Remember, the blue one is going to just spawn another abomination or another necromancer. That's why I'm nervous about it. That's like the laboratory. So that was to move and to get the objective. That's going to put him here at 7, and he's going to get a free action. Unfortunately, he still doesn't have the ability to open a door. So for his final action, I think he's going to do nothing, but I do need to add this final chip. So he's got four actions now, but I don't think he's doing anything else. Let's go ahead and have Silas go next, because he's on this space with these two walkers here. So Silas still just has a short bow in this hand. He has another short bow in his backpack. I don't want to spend any time arming him because these don't help each other. Something I haven't been able to talk about just yet is about these kinds of weapons here. I'm having a focusing problem all of a sudden. Uh, which is some of these weapons have this icon right here in the top corner. What that means is if you have both of those weapons armed at the same time, uh, they you kind of use them together in a single action. You're using both of those things. Uh, but that would only be if they both have the exact same name. So in other words, let's pretend that Silas had this over here. If he had another card that said Mana Blast, then that would mean that both of the Mana Blasts could be used in a single action. You'd roll two dice and hit on fours and stuff like that. Uh, but that's not the case with these short bows. So, um, again, I don't really know why I'm having a focusing problem all of a sudden, but that's okay. So, with these short bows, I don't really see a reason to spend an action to equip it. Let's just have him go ahead and attack. Oh, i got to get him better equipment. Let's have him attack uh, one of the walkers that are right there. So, let's just roll this. Oh, yeah, and I get to add one dice to my ranged. I forgot about that. So here we go. For this, we are hitting on a three or more. I just rolled these two dice. We actually took both of those guys out. So that's going to take care of both of those walkers here. And that's going to get me two experience points, which is great because now I have an extra action as well. So let's go ahead and add another chip to the stack. That'll be good. Uh, but hmm, here's, well, I guess having this extra action is a good thing. Here's... Uh, I, I, yeah, here's my struggle. For his remaining actions, I, I would love to come over here and open this door so that Nelly could run in there and kill the Necromancer. But I don't have the ability to open a door right now, so that really sucks. I don't have any uh, weapons to bash the doors down. Before I got that extra action, I was thinking I could move down here and try to shoot in this direction. But if I miss... Both of these guys, when they activate, are going to go in one, and then they're both going to attack me, giving me two damage, which is scary. But knowing that I have the ability to uh, do more actions, let's do that. Let's move down for one. I'm going to go ahead and shoot into that space because I'm such a good ranged person, and I get to roll the two dice. So I think I should be able to take out both of these guys. Oh, yes, I did get both of them. That's cool. So that was one, two. Oh. Yes, I forgot to add my little peg down here. So yeah, I was able to hit these guys. That's cool. And then I'm going to use one more to back away. So these guys are out, and he's just going to back up, be ready to help out Nelly in this direction here. And speaking of Nelly, it is her turn. In my perfect world, Nelly's going to be able to bash this door open, get in here, and kill the Necromancer, uh, which will put her in danger with Fatty. She does have a wound. But I really want to kill that Necromancer before this thing spawns some more. Okay, now for Nelly, opening the door. I don't believe that the dagger and the short sword work together in terms of opening the door. Because this kind of looks like it is down here for combat. So I am just going to be rolling. It doesn't matter which weapon I'm using. But I'm using one of these weapons to go ahead and try to bash open that door. <laughs> Great. That didn't work. Okay. Uh, I'll try again. I think I have one more shot at this. Uh, oh no, I gotta reevaluate. First of all, I'm making a heck of a lot of noise. And if I do open the door again, then I have one action of a move and another, I can't even get in there and attack that guy. Which means that spawn zone is sticking around. OK, 
Hey, gosh, that was frustratingly worthless use of my time. Um, all right, what about, what are some other options? I could bring these guys down this way, let these guys take a hold of that room, and have these guys start coming down here. What if I do that? Um, so she's going to have a free move action. I'll do that now. And then I'll have her move once, twice. Here. No, that's scary. Free move action. And have her go one. And then I'll try to open up that door. How about that? We just need to hope that we're not getting any runners. I am kind of taking a risk, but it's only one spawn zone in there. So hopefully that will be okay. And we can get to that other objective. That's on the seven, I think. So then she moved once. I'm going to try to bash open this door. Oh, worthless. But I need to add some noise. That was really frustrating. Um, but it is what it is. That was the end of uh, the player's turns. And that means it's time for the zombies on the board to activate. Thankfully, they're all kind of slow. So these guys are going to move one this way. One, two, three. Still too far for Samson to do anything. Oh, no, but he does have an extra action. Okay, Samson might be able to get in here and kill Fatty. This guy's going to move one. These guys are all going to move one closer towards where they're visible. They're seeing this guy right here. Okay, so that was the onboard activation. Now we need to spawn. So spawning for this zone, we're in the yellow still. Two walkers. Okay, that's not scary. We'll get these walkers on there. Um, next, since it's on camera, we'll spawn for this zone. Uh, I, well, no, I'm kind of going out of order. I got to stay in order so I remember stuff. So spawning for this zone is a double spawn, which will come down around. So two spawns for down here. We've got four walkers. Let me grab those. One, two, three, four. And then we've got a runner. Okay, so lots of action happening on these spaces down here. I'm really glad I didn't send these guys down that way. Um, okay, finally, spawning for right here. Go ahead and draw two fatties. Gosh, I am glad that Samson's up there, but I am sick of these guys. Okay, these two right here. Let's just plan on keeping that door closed, I guess. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the other fellas take care of that. All right, that was the end of the zombie phase. Just because they're on my mind. Oh, yep, I gotta clean off all of the noise tokens. There's a lot, so don't worry. I'll take care of those. I'm gonna have Nelly <laughs> keep trying to open this door. Apparently, it's tougher than I thought it was gonna be. And remember, my goal at this point, I've killed a necromancer, I've killed an abomination, is to survive and get these dumb objectives. So that's kind of why I'm trying to get into this room. Here we go. Pick it up, die. <sighs> nope. Try again. Nope. This is stupid. Try again. All right. Fine enough, freaking Lee. So that was three noise tokens on this space. We're going to go ahead and open up the door, finally. And uh, I do believe that this is one zone, because if it was multiple zones, you would see like walls blocking it off. So I only need one spawn card for that, which is three walkers. Not ideal, but it is what it is. Okay, so one, two, three. Nelly does have a free move action, so what if I move in that room and I try to take out those guys, and if I need it, Silas is there to protect me. She has one wound, there's three walkers in there. It is a little risky what I'm doing, but maybe it'll be worth the, the shot. These guys are going to have to come in around this way, and yeah, they are, they are scary, but maybe I can outrun them. Okay, so this is a risk, but I'm going to come down into here. She's using her dagger, oh yeah, free move, and then I'm attacking. And then she's gonna use her dagger, which is gonna let her also use her short sword. I'm looking for a four or better. Of course, I didn't get any of it. Of course, I mean, really. Which means that if Silas doesn't come in here, she's going to die. So she's like, uh, help, and he's like, sure. So he's gonna come down here, one, two. And it's Silas's turn, and I just realized I'm I'm destroying my magic. I had accidentally left that short bow there for Nelly's other turns. My bad. Okay, so Silas took two moves to get in there. Um, and he is going to go ahead and he's attacking with his ranged weapon. Which, 
and it's kind of a crappy choice for Silas, but it is a ranged weapon. He is taking a ranged action right now, so Nelly could get hurt and or killed by Silas. But if he doesn't come in here and doesn't try to help her, then she's going to die anyway. So I think we're going to do it anyway. Silas gets plus one roll for his ranged attack. Come on, I need two hits right here. Shoot. Oh my gosh. Silas just killed Nelly. Holy cow. Uh, I seriously did not see that coming. She's gone. Okay. That was really crappy planning on my part. Sorry. So, we just basically just go ahead and remove her stuff, take her figure off the board, and hope that Silas can take care of these guys before they all kill him when they activate because nobody is around to rescue him. So he had moved twice, and then he tried to fight, so now he's fighting again. Oh my gosh, Silas just died too because, oh my gosh, well maybe not. Dang it. Uh, all right, you are witnessing my rolls. Not good. The only way that I can see him getting any help out of here is for somebody to come through this door and fight these guys, but I think they might all be too far. So the issue that we're going to be dealing with up here is that Baldrick is the person who's closest and most able to come over and help Silas. But remember, he doesn't have anything to open that stupid door. So... <laughs> I just don't all right here's what I'm thinking I'm gonna end up sending I'm gonna end up sending Samson over that way because I could have um, I'm getting all their names mixed up Clovis come down he can actually fight fatty so what if I end up sending this guy one two to try to bash that door open but yeah anyway I think yes Silas's turn is done so I'm gonna do that let's go ahead and move him one two and then we'll go ahead and use the hammer to try to open the door. Ah, come on. Four. Okay, we finally opened a freaking door. So we're going to crack that open. And that did cause some noise in case that ends up mattering. I don't know if it will necessarily. And then he does have one final action. Um, I'm thinking... The question is, do I send him in there also or does he stay over around and help Anne? we're down to five people so I can't be split in half necessarily um, I think they've got some time they have some time in the other room so I'm gonna have him come over this way with Anne, or he could I would have him search but I feel like I love the things that he has right now all right I'm gonna have him come down a little bit closer because he can absorb some damage with his iron hide ability that I haven't had a chance to talk about yet but with that door open, uh, let's now go on to Baldrick's turn. So Baldrick is going to go one into the vault up here. And oh no, the other vault isn't open yet. Baldrick can't open doors. <laughs> Freaking heck. Okay. Gosh, this is so frustrating. I'm doing a terrible job. Silas is going to die. Okay, so uh, yeah, he's going to go one, and I'm going to have him pick up this. Maybe it will, I can't remember what it is. I think it's a nice crossbow. Yeah, an orcish crossbow. So this is two. Okay, um, I want to keep the chain lightning spell. I don't need the mana spell. I'm going to put the mana spell into the backpack. But of course, of course it doesn't open doors. So he moved into the vault. He picked that up. Silas is going to die anyway. All right, I'm going to come back out of the vault the same way I entered. I feel like I was doing so good until those freaking terrible rolls, which is part of why I try to not record these kind of videos. Um, and yes, in case it's not clear, I am enjoying myself, but my bad rolling sometimes makes games like this very frustrating. Okay, so he came in for one, he picked up for two, he's coming back out for three, and let's just have him head this way. Silas is just gonna die. That's all I can do about that. Okay. The reason why Clovis is of no help is because he only has three actions. So he could go one space to the room, one space into the vault, and try to open the door, but at that point it doesn't help. It's just gonna bring that storm of zombies our way. 
All right, so Clovis. Best thing Clovis can do is go one, and let's have him do the Inferno spell. So the Inferno spell, we're gonna roll four dice. We're looking for fours or betters. I would love, love two successes here. I need two successes. Okay, two successes, good deal. So that's gonna be one, two, and now I have an extra action, and I'll go ahead and put this here. So that takes out the Necromancer, which is helpful. I'm gonna get rid of this spawn zone, I think. Again, I could get rid of any of them, but it would be nice if we could just kind of clean this stuff up over here, uh, get those objectives released, you know? Okay, so that was that. Now he has two more actions. He can't do much, but he could go one, two. I could send Clovis in to take care of everything down here. Um, and then I can send these guys through the vault to go take care of the other crap that I'm not doing a good job with. Okay, so for the zombie movement, uh, for the things that are on the board, it's going to get a little bit complicated here. Uh, so zombies always move for line of sight first. If they can't see anything, then they're going to be listening for whatever the noisiest space is. And I think I mentioned this before. Each character counts as a noise token. So this space has three noise over here. That space has one. This space has three noise tokens from Nelly bashing on that door all the time. Now the reason why I mention that is, looking at these zombies, nobody is in their line of sight, so they're going to follow the noise. Since there are two equally noisy places, my understanding is, <laughs> and I always get this wrong, and we have to look it up and read it every time I play this, uh, this group is going to split in half and go, one person's going to come towards this noise, and the other person's going to come towards that noise. The distance to the noise doesn't matter. So like the fact that these guys are a lot closer than this noise doesn't matter in this example. So that's how these guys are moving. These guys are moving towards line of sight. So they're coming onto Clovis's space right here. For this whole group down here, nobody's in their line of sight. And so they're moving towards the noise, which the destination, like they're going to have to come up and around towards the other guys anyway. So this guy's going to move one. All of these walkers are going to move one. They're moving towards either this noise or that noise, but the path is still the same. So they're moving like that. These zombies all activate, and that is going to totally kill off Silas. And that's because there are three zombies eating at him, and he has no way to protect himself. He is totally gone and dead. Mm, Silas and Nelly. They were cute for a while, but now they're just gone. Oh my gosh. Anne never took a turn. I don't think, if I'm doing my tracking correctly, I don't think Anne has taken a turn. That's crazy. Okay, so... I don't know if she would be able to do anything. Let's go to the board and look at what maybe she could have done. So sorry. I, yeah, I realize this is silly. Looking at Anne, uh, she would not have been able to go help Silas, I'm pretty sure, because uh, there would be one move to get into this room, two moves to come here, and then she'd have to try to open the door. And we all know how successful I've been with that. She only has three actions. She's still in the blue zone, so I wouldn't have had her do that. But what if we put these zombies back here and she goes, one... One, does her bloodlust melee to get over here. My ultimate goal is, oh, maybe instead of doing bloodlust melee, I want to run across is really what I'm doing. I want to get to the other vault. But I do have my cool crossbow. I forgot about that. Um, okay, so maybe she goes, moves one to that upper room. She would have to do bloodlust melee to move across. Okay, so she is going to... She's going to do that. That allows her to move two and then do a melee action. So I'm going to roll this. Good. Okay. So that was an experience point. And I realize I might be trapping myself here. Um, ideally, I'd be running across, but now I only have one action, which means I can't leave that zombie there. Uh, but we could use our crossbow now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use the crossbow, uh, which will give me two dice. I just need three or better. Let's kill this guy. Awesome. Okay, we did get that. She has another experience point now that does remove that walker from the board. Back to the zombie actions. Uh, this runner needed to go one, two, again, moving towards the noise. These guys are just going one right there. All right. I'm back on track. I am super sorry. I didn't mean to get so crazy. Um, what's happening behind the scenes a little bit, so I'm a teacher. Uh, our school has experienced two pretty tragic events today, 
and a lot of the information is coming out as I'm filming and so I've kind of been texting and filming at the same time. Um, and I, I realized I should just put this away and focus on one or the other, but I've been recording this thing for a week now and I'm trying to just get it done. So we're gonna keep going on. Here we go. Sorry, I'm just apologizing for my mistakes. Continuing to play this game. So for this spawn zone up here, we are going to spawn a fatty. All right, not good for Anne, but it could have been worse. Hopefully, knock on wood, it won't get worse. Uh, she could run away from that guy. No problem. Uh, it's just going to take her a little longer than usual. Okay, so that was for that zone. For this zone, we are getting another fatty. Okay, sorry, I didn't hold that up to the camera very well. That's going there. And for down here, another fatty. Jeez Louise. Okay, um, cool. That's that. Uh, at least it didn't get worse for Anne. And what I think I'll do is I'm going to spend two actions to get away from that guy and another action to come into here. So that was really all that she's doing. She's just going to try to book it into that other room, see if we can get that those last two objectives that are in that room uh, while we're over there. Next up, let's have Clovis try to take care of these guys. So let's go ahead and since I'm facing off with two fatties, I've got to use the Inferno. The Great Sword won't do anything. So I'm going to grab four dice. It's not melee, so I'm not using an extra die. And let's see if we could take care of both of these guys. I need fours or betters. Oh man, gosh, these rolls are better. It was just that Nelly stuff. Nelly is the bad roller. I completely, fully blame her. But either way, he's going to get two experience points for doing that. That will remove these guys from the board. For another action, we're going to flip this over. I really hope it is not. There's no Necromancer on the board now, so that's good. It won't bring an Abomination. Is it blue? Nope, it's not blue. Okay, so that's another five experience points for him. So one, two, three, four, five, like that. That's a 14. Sometimes these kind of get off. It's a little frustrating. And then for his final action, he's just going to move over one. You know, I don't want to get cocky, but this might be doable. It's going to be tough, but it might be doable. Oh, and silly me, I forgot he actually has another action. So he fought off the two guys. He got the objective. He moved one. He's going to move again. Ah, <sighs> man. I completely forgot to remove all of the noise tokens, which I am doing right now. There we go. Okay, noise tokens are removed. And he cannot open any doors, so I've got to send Samsung in to see if we can open some doors. So he's going to go one, two, and then, oh, we can't move from here. So he moved twice, and now he's trying to bust open the door. So we'll go ahead and roll this. Of course not. Okay, we did make a noise. I'll mark that in a second. Let's try one more time to get that door open. Nope. Neat. Holding patterns are my favorite. So two noise tokens down here in the vault. And I'm going to go ahead and send Baldrick. He can't open the door. I'm going to have him search first. Might as well. So he's going to search, and then he's going to move one, two, and not do anything. So his search brings plenty of arrows. So I was kind of mentioning this with the bolts earlier. This says you may reroll all ranged attacks once with weapons with the arrows keyword. The new result takes place of the previous one. So, yeah, that's not going to be overly helpful, but, oh, this is awkward. One two okay let's go ahead and bring this back and this doesn't help him so i'm just going to put it into his backpack remember there are five slots in the backpack what did he do he searched he moved twice and now he's gonna give samson a big hug because they're nervous about what's on the other side of that door all right now so for zombie activation things might get complicated we have a lot of guys down in the vault but as far as i can tell the vault entrance is over here. So that's where all of the noise is. So uh, Anne is not in line of sight of this zombie because this zombie can only see in here and here and there. So he's going to follow the noise towards the vault that way. Right? Right, I think. Uh, it's very, I'll talk more about this in Final Thoughts, but for whatever reason, sometimes the zombie movement seems very, very complicated for me. Other people probably think it's simple. There's a reason why this game is extremely popular, but I struggle sometimes. Okay, so now this speedy guy is going to go one, two, as he moves towards the most noise, because nobody's in his line of sight. Um, this whole group is going to be moving one towards that entrance over there. These guys, oh, they're off camera. These guys are coming up here too. 
these guys are actually going to leave that room and go this way. Again, I don't technically, right? Could they hear? Would they just stay here? I don't think so. I think they're going to go towards the entrance. They're going to see if they can enter there. Uh, it's the best I can know. I might, I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm happy to annotate it in the comment. If you leave me a comment, I will annotate it. Okay, so we basically have this huge horde of zombies heading that way. Uh, but that's good if they're heading that way because then we can do other things in other places. Uh, but now we need to spawn. So spawning for this zone right here brings us a necromancer. So here's a necromancer spawn zone thing. And here's our necromancer friend. And we need to spawn again. He brings with him a fatty. There we go. For this zone over here, we've got two fatties. Those are yellows. Okay, two fatties. Here we go. I got to start killing these off or else they're going to get these double activations. So what happens is if I run out of miniatures, anytime I draw the card, those miniatures just activate a second time if I don't have any mini more miniatures to bring into these spawn zones. That's why like if a necromancer is on the board, you don't have any other necromancers to bring out, then you just have the necromancer move again. Same with the abomination if he was spawning again. Okay, but for down here, three walkers. Okay, I got plenty of those. I'm down to five fatties that are off of the board right now. Okay, there's our three walkers. That's the end of the zombies turn. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have Anne start us off. She's going to go one into the vault and try to open the door. Oh, yes, and noise tokens need to go away. Okay, no more noise. Okay, so she moved one. We're going to try to bash open that door. I don't have high hopes. Oh, my gosh, I did it. Guys, I opened a door. And since this door is opening for this building for the first time, uh, there are two different rooms here. Here's kind of that wall that I was talking about. So two different spawn zones within this space. So this is the last card that I have in the deck. It is one runner is coming into this space over here. So let me grab that. Um, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and just take a second and get all of these shuffled in. Uh, and while I'm doing that, look, I'm not even cutting away. While I'm shuffling these things, well, can I do this on camera? I have to awkwardly hug the tripod. This is not comfortable. Okay, I'm shuffling these. This just means that obviously more necromancers can come up, but also the abomination might show up again. If I remember correctly, in this deck, there's only one abomination card. Well, maybe not true. I don't know. Uh, we've only seen one from the blue flames, but maybe there's more in the other flames. But okay, here we go. They were shuffled. I'm going to cut it once and let's spawn for this room. Okay, a double spawn. Since we're spawning in this room, I wrap back around over here. Where did that? Oh, there's that guy. Okay, so we're going to spawn twice. So that's going to be two walkers and four walkers. Holy cow. What did Ann just walk into? All right, I got to get six walkers on the board while I place these cards up here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now that this door is open, I don't think she wants to run into there anymore because they're on the way. So what I think we'll do is I'm going to send Anne back in this way now that that door is open and the zombies, because the door is open, the zombies are going to follow her into the vault first and then into this room. So maybe that will kind of empty it out for the other guys to cross over from the purple vault room. All right, so that's the end of Anne's turn. Now we need to get the purple vault door open, which means I got to go to Samson's turn first. First thing he's going to do is try to bash open that door. Nope. All right, so that is one noise. I'll get that added in a second. Try again. Nope. Cool. Try again. Oh my gosh, this is a freaking joke. I hate opening these stupid doors. <sighs> Finally, it only took four ferns. So here we go, four noise tokens. The problem is with all of that bashing, now that this door is open, all of these zombies are going to start funneling in through here. My plan is to bring, it was to bring these guys in, open up this door and start running over that way as these zombies are going in through the yellow vault. I, don't, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do anymore. These rolls are so frustrating for me. But what I can do is try to get Baldrick out ahead of that. So he's going to go one into here, two, picking up the objective. Please don't be a necromancer. 
Okay, good. All right, so we need to give him some experience points. So Baldrick moved for one, and then he did the objective, which got him five points. We're going to put him up to 12. Okay. Um, all right, what do I want to do next? I have two good options how to attack those guys on the outside. So the way that this crossbow works is you can either use it to do a melee attack, which has the same power as using it as a ranged attack. Uh, the difference is, I think, that remember those issues with targeting. Um, yeah, so you could either use this as melee or as range instead of using it as a pure range. Also, it has a great range. Um, okay, but it's going to need to be reloaded at the end of the turn. But that's okay, because I could do one... Well, I could do this action anyway, huh? Okay, so for my next action, it's going to be my free spell casting action. I'm going to shoot at the people who are right outside of the door... And so that's going to require three dice. I'm looking for five or better. There's three walkers hanging out out there. Okay, I got two of them. So two here. We'll get rid of any two. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, sorry. I was just putting minis back into the bowls. Okay, so that was that. And I have one more action. So why don't I just use my crossbow and try to hit this person as well. So using the cro the crossbow, I'm going at a range of one. Uh, oh wait, no, hold on. I moved in for one. I did the objective for two. I did my free spell casting, uh, and now I could either it could, I could either go I could go either way. I'll use two dice. Um, hmm. Do I? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use two dice. I'm going to use my thing. Good. Okay. I ended up getting that final one. I'm not speaking words real good right now, but I did get that last one outside of that door. So he's gone, and I do have one more action. Why don't I go ahead and search? Ooh, I got some salted meat. Discard this to gain one experience point. Uh, sure. Why don't I just discard that right now? At this point, I mean, I don't really want to approach orange, but I don't really want to carry around salted meat anyway. So there was that. Okay, I have three objectives left, one in three chance that this is a blue one. The reason why I'm hesitant to open this one is that's going to bring out the Abomination, uh, who sucks. So I kind of don't want him to go, but we do just need to get that objective. Okay, yeah, and the reason why that is is because when I find the lab, it's going to bring uh, the Necromancer out, but the Necromancer's already out, which would put the Abomination back on the board. Okay. Uh, let's just do it anyway. We're going to have to do it at some point, right? So I'm going to go ahead for his first action, for um, Clovis's first action, flip this over. Oh, thank goodness. <sighs> Lucked out on that one. So that got him five experience points, which does put us into orange, which does make me nervous, but we have opened all the rooms at least. But come spawning time, I'm going to be hating life a little bit more. That also means, here, I'll do this, that I need to pick one of these. I can either get plus one free melee action or the sword master. The sword master means that you treat all melee weapons like they have the uh, cross up here, so you could use them dual-handed. But I really like the things that he's got, so why don't I do a free melee action for this guy? Wow, I am off on my aim. Okay, get this in here. Can I do it? Yes, I can. Okay, yes, I can. All right, that was one for Clovis. Next, let's move him. Kind of tough to know exactly where to put him. Uh, let's go here. I could try to open that door. Yep, let's do it. We're going for it. I highly doubt I'll be very successful because I need a five to open the door, but we're going to try. Oh my gosh, I did it, guys. So that made some noise, but we got this door open. And now, with these guys standing right here, why don't I go ahead and shoot some stuff into there? Or, well, hmm, do I use my free melee action? So, like, I could move into that space and use the sword, or do I stand there and use this? I think I'm going to stand there and use my Inferno. Okay, so either way, it's sixes, but this one keeps me a little safer from all of the scary things approaching. So, I'm going to roll four dice. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> you all saw that, right? It's like it's like I'm either I'm either all ones and twos or I am all fives. Wow. Um that was really great, you guys. That was really great. I'm glad we participated in this moment together. So just be aware, come movement time, 
All of these are coming in there. He's ready. He's got his sword. We're good to go. I was thinking that Samson had a turn now, but I remembering from all of that freaking noise that he was just worthless as he was bashing on that door. So instead, what we need to do is have people move towards the noisiest noise, which is still this purple room for those that are out of sight. So this guy's moving over here. This guy's moving over here. The necromancer is going towards his closest exit, which is going to be down this way. This runner is going to move two places. Again, that's because of all of that noise coming from that one tiny door over there. These guys are all going in here because they can actually see Clovis. So they're coming in this way. I'm just going to remove this noise token for now and the other noise tokens while I remember because as you guys have witnessed, I keep forgetting. Okay, so those are out of the way. Uh, this vault is open now. So, in fact, maybe the runner going towards the noise probably actually would have gone one, two, now that I think about that runner, uh, because this is also an opening to that noise. Okay, so he's coming down that way. Uh, these guys are going over here, again, towards that purple vault. These guys are here. These guys are up here. Uh, how, how, okay, these guys all enter the vault. I've got one runner in there. So these guys are going into the, I can't pick them up, hold on, before I do that, fatty moves, fatty moves, okay. These guys are going into the yellow vault right there. What a nightmare. And I think that was it for movement. So now it is time to spawn. We're gonna start with this light red one, spawning. We're in the uh, orange now, oh my gosh, five walkers. I was not worried about that before, I'm getting worried about it now. This is kind of how this game goes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, but now I need to spawn for the Necromancer. I'll also point out there's no limit to the number of figures on a space. Six walkers, excellent. Uh, we have 11 walkers there now. I've got to get these objectives and get the crap out. Okay, I'm just off camera a little bit, counting out six walkers. Cool, all right, 11 walkers on this space. I could use some dragon bile right about now. And now for that space over there, a double spawn, which circles around down to here. Okay, an extra, I don't remember, oh, this extra activation happened when I was in blue. <sighs> okay, all of the standard walkers are gonna get an extra activation. So here's what that means. Uh, these guys are moving up here. These guys are moving here. I need to remember, I gotta come back and do one more thing here. Oh no. These guys just ate Clovis. Yeah, Clovis just died from that D-A-M-N draw. Okay, all 11 of these walkers are still, that still has noise tokens, I just removed them a little prematurely, are here. Gosh, this is impossible to track. Okay, uh, here, okay, that's neat. And then all of these yellow vault ones come over here with Anne. Right? I think that they do. Yeah, I think so. Probably. Because even if they're still going towards the purple one, they have to pop out of that room there. All right. I think and hope I did that correctly. I know it wasn't framed very well. <sighs> okay, we got to go spawn one more time. And this looks terrible because it is terrible. But remember, I only have two more objectives I have to find. And they're in a completely empty room right now for now. Okay, one more spawn is three fatties. All right, I got a couple of fatties left. So that's fine. All right, one, two, three. Okay, but they're kind of blocking my path over there. How in the world do I pull this off? I just have to get this objective and the objective in this room over here. Well, while we're here, let's start off with Baldric. Um, do you know what? I actually don't think I want to start with Baldric because I want to get that door open and he can't open doors. So instead, let's go to Samson. He's going to take his turn first. Who is going to move into Baldric's room. And... Um, I'm going to try to bash. I think Baldur can take care of these guys. I'm going to try to open the door. He should never try to open doors. All right, here we go. So he moved, and now we're going to try to open the door. Good luck. Five. Yeah! Okay, we opened the door. Yay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a noise token here. This is completely hopeless, by the way, and he can't leave this space because there's too many zombies there. I would love for him to go after the fatties, but the fatties are melee and the crossbow is ranged. So what if he just helps out? Oh, why am I even opening that door? I shouldn't have opened that door. Maybe I should have. That's just gonna bring the fatties in. I don't know. I kind of feel like I've lost. Boo. Okay, from here, let's go ahead and use our repeating bolts. I'm gonna try to attack. It is ranged. Anything I miss is gonna hit Baldrick. Uh, do I just use, no, let's, whatever, we're gonna do it. Okay, I'm feeling very defeated, can you tell in my voice? Here we go, Samson is attacking, he's gonna try to not hit Baldrick. And he just hit Baldrick twice. But he took out one walker in the process, but that just killed Baldrick. Cool, thanks Samson, that was awesome. Um, well, that was one action. There we go, and let's have him try that one more time now that people are gone. Great, great. Didn't hit anybody. Nice. So Anne, our final hope. Here we go. Obviously Samson is still alive for a moment, but won't be after Anne's turn. Anne is standing here with all of these lovely people. Uh, she could use her crossbow, but our dear Anne is still in the blue. So, do I really use my crossbow now? I think I have to, uh, because if I even make one kill, then I'll get one more action. <laughs> yeah, all right, so we are gonna do this. We are gonna use an action to reload, and yeah, well, let's start by actually trying to kill some zombies. So, two dice, this is great. Well, at least I killed two zombies. That is gonna earn me an extra action. I'm at eight now. Okay, thanks, Anne. This is here. I'm gonna spend one to reload, and I'm gonna to try to shoot again. Okay, I got one more, so that's a third. I'll take off three zombies in a moment. It won't matter. And then for my final action, because I don't wanna just reload, let's go ahead and just take a swipe with our sword. And yes, all right, I killed four zombies. So for the first three zombies, those had to be walkers because they were ranged. Uh, for the melee one, I was going after this guy. It doesn't matter though because there are still three walkers there. And now that the zombies activate, they kill Anne. All of these guys take on Samson and we just died. So that was Zombicide. It did not go very well for me. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that just did not go well. Uh, obviously I lost. I feel like I was closer than I was gonna be. Let's check. Which one was the, There was our blue one down there. Would have been the last one I would have grabbed. Oh, man. That's tough. Okay, so it was semi-close. But ultimately, I think, for me, what it came down to were two moments that really killed it. Like, I probably would have lost anyway, so I don't want to say it was this. And I, d I did have some good dice rolls in there, for sure. But I feel like I had good dice rolls when it didn't matter. And then between Nelly and Samson not being able to open the doors, that just killed me. Um, in some respects, I guess it was good. I used that noise to pull people one place or the other, but essentially, like that was bananas, how I just couldn't open those doors. So what could I have done better? Well, I probably should have searched more. So I think that there are things that maybe would have, well, yeah, I didn't have any armor. Technically, I guess Samson may have Samson may have survived. Uh, we never talked about his iron hide. So Samson actually has armor called iron hide. And when he's bitten, you roll as many dice as uh, wounds that he's about to take on. So like for these three here and then this runner, that would have been five wounds. So Samson would have rolled five dice, one for each wound, and anything that was five or better he would have avoided, but he still would have taken on three wounds. Okay, so he still dies, right? Um, but let's take a look. Did any of these things help me? That's still not a good door helper. Uh, more experience. Uh, more dragon bile, which is good. Oh, man, and let's talk about how lucky I was. I seriously was so lucky to get that dragon bile and that, and that torch so early. Um, this disintegrate spell, yeah, whatever. I still wouldn't have been able to open up doors. Um, 
yeah. So let's talk about some things that I like. I mean, I'm a big zombie fan, so I like that. I actually do kind of like the rolling combat stuff. You know, it's kind of fun. Um, this used to be my exact kind of game. Like, I was obsessed with these kinds of games. As time has gone on, I've moved more towards Euro-style games, more so than just rolling and fighting type of stuff. But my nephews are obsessed with this game. They love it, which is cool. So that's a big pro for this game. Um, some cons for me, dice rolling. I can't roll dice for the life of me. I just should stop before I even start. So that's a frustration for me is that I don't feel like there's very much luck mitigation in this game. Uh, the other things are it's luck with your draw. So for example, I was honestly so lucky with getting that bile on that torch as I have said so many times already. But there have been games that I've played with my nephews where those things that we needed were at the bottom of the deck and we never saw them. And we even looked after, we were like, would we have ever found these things? And they just were not there at all. So that's a frustration. I halfway wish during setup that in this scenario you took the top half of the deck and shuffled a dragon bile and a torch in there or something like that. Just some way, because we were just running from the abomination. We just, there was no, there was no luck. Um, the other thing that's kind of annoying for me is just, I mean, that rule book is 55 pages because it's talking about targeting and moving and stuff like that. It's very, I feel like spawning things is kind of, it's more obnoxious than I want it to be. And it gets kind of natural after some time, but even still, I've played this game like 10 times. I still have to look back at the rule book and remind myself, okay, what do I do? Also, sometimes the zombie movement doesn't feel very natural. Like, you just want to move them to what's closest. They don't care what's closest. They go for line of sight, and then they go for noise. So, it's just, just a couple of things like that. But man, this game is so popular. And so I know that by saying some negative things, that's a negative for some viewers. But that's just how I feel about Zombicide. It's still fun. When my nephews asked to play it, heck, my sister just texted me last week and said, next time you're coming down, bring Zombicide, the boys want to play. And I was like, awesome, let's do it. Um, but yeah, that's how I feel. Bad luck, I have bad luck. And that, that for me is makes it so that I don't pull out this game to play by myself, but I am happy to pull this game out to play with people who want to. Okay, wow, that was a lot of talking. Thank you guys for being patient with me. Thanks for being patient as I'm kind of dealing with some stuff off camera. I will get this thing edited and uploaded as fast as I can. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I won't be able to do any filming during then. One more week of school and then it's summertime and I'm going to start busting out videos left and right. Okay, talk to you guys later. Um, bye.